Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here, PressureCleaningSchool.com, DougRuckerStore.com. Had quite a few requests here lately over, over the last couple of months to uh, do a little video on the equipment that I have on our truck mounted skid um, in our F-250. So thought I'd shoot a quick video and kind of go over some of the things that we have on it. So stay tuned for that coming up next. Okay, guys, this is a uh, 2013 F-250. This is the long bed, eight-foot bed. Um, I think if I'm doing a skid system like this in the back of a truck, that's the only way that I would go is the longer bed. Um, the extra room is just absolutely a necessity and worth it to me. Um, you could go lesser equipment, of course, and get a smaller, smaller truck, and that would work, but... Uh, this is the eight foot bed and uh, the red arrow there that you see, by the way, going to be a lot of arrows in this just to kind of help you uh, focus on what I'm talking about and also uh, help me as well. But the red arrow, of course, is our 10 gallon per minute King Slinger soft wash system. Um, it's the 10 gallon per minute, which is the highest gallon per minute. Um, that you can get in the Kingslinger or any type of flow jet pump. There's no other, no way to get it any higher than that. Um, so that's why we have this. If there was a way to get it higher, we would, of course, sell one um, that was more gallon per minute, but you just can't do it. Next to it is a five gallon per minute, um, 3,500 PSI pressure washer. And then next to it is an eight gallon per minute uh, pressure washer. Uh, 3,500 PSI, the five gallon per minute will rarely ever get used by us. Um, this truck is used by my guys on jobs and, uh, you know, they just prefer the eight gallon per minute. It's very tough for me. I have to really make them sometimes use the, uh, five gallon per minute on jobs every now and then just to keep it running. Um, the only time it really has come in handy is if we've had a job, um, where the eight gallon per minute wouldn't start or there was some type of problem with it. Um, then we were, of course, able to hook up the five gallon per minute and finish it. But that has been very rare. I think once over in the last year and a half, we've had to do that. So um, if I had to do it over again, I probably would eliminate the five gallon per minute and the hose reel that goes with this just to create a little bit more space on uh, the hose or the not the hose but the uh, shelves that they're sitting on so the shelves stick out over um, the bed there a little bit as you can see which holds all three pieces of that equipment um, right next to the air compressor you can see there's an air hose that's about a 50 foot hose um, that's what supplies the air uh, to the king slinger and I use a 50 footer that way if we ever have to air up a tire or need to use any type of air tool for something else, then of course uh, we can do that. But that's the equipment side of the truck skid. So let's go to the next part here coming up. Okay, guys, this is real quick. This is the side of the King Slinger where we've got the pump station. Um, and we have the 10 gallon per minute pump on the right and then we've got the mixing valves uh been over that before just want to go over it again real quick the blue valve is our water valve um the green valve there on the left that's our main bleach valve that we use most of the time and then uh up top is another valve that's a spare and we use it predominantly for extra bleach for larger jobs um, we have two 85-gallon tanks that are dedicated. Uh, one is, you know, for the green uh, for bleach, that green valve, and then the middle one. We can actually use that tank for, you know, degreaser, wrap if we wanted to spray a lot of gutters or a lot of, you know, parking spots or whatever. Um, so that's what the middle valve is used for. I do not use a valve for soap to mix with my bleach mix. I just pour my soap into the bleach tank. It's never found the need to meter uh, soap, so um, that's how 
I use my vowels. Um, works out best for for me. Some guys like to meter their soap. That's fine. Um, the one valve that you never ever want to not meter is the water, uh, because that gives you the ability to make your bleach even stronger than a 50-50 mix by turning the water meter valve down a little bit. By the way, guys, don't forget to hit that like button. Um, be sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell so that you get notifications. Um, to the channel for when I come out with videos. This is the side with the uh, hose reels. They're all electric hose reels. The red hose is uh, the red arrow. That's our pressure hose, which is uh, hooked to the eight gallon per minute machine uh, that we use it predominantly. So that's got 200 feet of hose. The hose reel under the orange arrow, that's got 150 foot of hose. Um, it's not really hooked to a swivel or anything. It's just used as extra hose if we need it. Um, but we could also, you know, run it off the five gallon per minute machine if we needed to. But it really is just predominantly there mainly to have spare hose on larger jobs if we need it. And then underneath the yellow arrow or above the yellow arrow, that is the green uh, Flexilla water hose that we run to the garden hose that then fills up the water tank that supplies the water to the pressure washer. And finally, uh, the last hose is the green hurricane hose um, for the soft wash system, probably the best hose I've ever used. I just put this on a couple of weeks ago and uh, we just absolutely love it. And uh, previously I've been using an air type hose, half inch air hose or whatever, um, but it was old. I used it for four or five years and just decided it was time to change it. And uh, so we have this hose, uh, Hurricane Soft Wash hose, available at the DougRuckerStore.com. And uh, like I said, we absolutely like it. Even my guy, one of my guys yesterday said, man, I love this hose. Um, so anyway, that's the hose reels. And that's on the, uh, of course, on the passenger side of the truck. So now we'll delve into a little bit of uh, the meats and bones inside the bed of the truck. Hey, another thing I uh, want to remind you about, um, if you're just starting a pressure washing business, roof cleaning, soft washing business, don't forget to go to freshercleaningschool.com. I've got an online video school there with over 260 uh, training videos. Um, you can also take tests, get a certification uh, certificate printed out if you pass the test. Um, but all the information pricing there uh, is on that website, PressureCleaningSchool.com. And uh, will drastically, drastically help you cut your learning curve and save you a ton of time searching YouTube videos and whatnot. Here on the back of the truck um, is the ladder rack. And a uh, very big thing for me, whether we're building a trailer or a truck skid like this, is to make sure that the ladders are reachable. Um, I hate seeing ladder uh, skid systems or trailer systems built where you have to use a ladder to get to the ladder. So these are very easy to reach. Um, just standing, you don't have to get on the bump or anything. I come like five foot eight and a half, five foot nine, something like that, I think. Um, and I can e easily reach these ladders, easily tie them off using the Titan strap. So very manageable um, ladder rack to put your ladders on there. We've got one that's <clears throat> a 16 footer and then we've got another 24 footer there on the left. So that's the ladder rack system. And like I said, very easy to use and manage. Now on the inside of the truck, um, of course, of sitting on the skid, we've got tanks, 385, 380 gallon tanks, that is. Um, the top red arrow button, uh, top red arrow is pointing to the bulkhead fitting, and then the bottom one is pointing to the hose. So that hose comes out and it feeds the pressure washer, and this is how we hook it up to the machine. We actually have a cam lock fitting coming off of the pump. And then from there, uh, the hose has the uh, fitting that goes into that cam lock fitting. So uh, all we have to do is just put the, the end of the hose into that cam lock, shut the cam locks, and then the 
tank will feed the machine with the water. And then uh, we also have a cap that will uh, we put over the top of this hose when we're not using it. And I'll show you that next. So once we're done with the job um, or for the day or whatever, uh, we take the hose out of the cam lock fitting and we'll lay the hose down and either let the water drain out so we're not traveling with a bunch of water or uh, if it's already empty, then we uh, just put this dust cover over it. Um, so water, so you know, let's say we did not want to drain the water. We got to move on the property or, or whatever. We can put this dust cap on that will prevent the water from, from coming out um, and also prevents anything from crawling up inside of it like a lizard or whatever. Um, trust me, I've had that happen before, but <clears throat> that's the cap we use to cap off the hose line. Uh, for traveling purposes. These two hoses are hooked to the 80 gallon bleach tanks. Remember I told you there's two tanks that we uh, use for bleach. One mainly is bleach. The other we use for bleach sometimes when we need extra bleach or wrap or degreaser or whatever. So these are hoses that go directly to those tanks. Um, one for each tank and those tanks have drop tubes that go to the bottom of them. So uh, we hook a hose coming off our pump at our office um, that is hooked to our bleach, big bleach tank that we get bulk deliveries. So we can hook the hose up to this, uh, fire the pump up, turn that ball valve, and then our bleach fills up directly into the tank. So we never actually have to you know, jump up inside the truck um, to open the cap and fill it that way. Um, there's some reasons that we don't do that. I'm going to go over in a minute, but the red arrow one is the one that we use primarily that we always fill up. And then the white PVC one with the green arrow, that's the one that we is the spare tank. So either way, we fill these um, off of the truck instead of having to get up, drop a gun inside of it or, you know, uh, ball valve or whatever to fill up. Um, they've got drop tubes in them that go all the way to the bottom. So, you know, the biggest thing about the drop tube inside the tank, what that does is it prevents any suds or soap from, you know, filling up inside the tank and coming out of the uh, top of the tank because we're, we're eliminating any type of air gap and uh, because it's filling from the bottom. So, so these two tanks that you see right here, one on the right, one on the left, these are the two bleach tanks I've been talking about. Coming off the tops of those, we have two hoses. There are no drop tubes on these two hoses. These are what I call vent hoses. So uh, there's no drop tube, there's no fitting, there's just a bulkhead and a 90 degree fitting and then our half inch hose coming off of this. Um, off of that fitting and what this does is this helps bring the gases and the fumes caused by the bleach um, it allows those to vent so if you've got a system or you've got a tank where you have to continually open the tank to fill your bleach or open the tank to stick a or open the cap to stick a drop tube in it so that um, you can spray your bleach mix, say your batch mixing or whatever, then those fumes and those gases, they come out of the top of that tank and then they settle down onto your equipment and your trailer and they just cause a lot of rust issues. So like I said previously, these tanks are set up where we never have to get up into the truck and open the cap unless we need to pour some soap in it and that's, that's kind of rare because we use the King Sling, uh, the King's Cling soap, and that's some pretty good soap. Um, you can fill the tank up, put a gallon in there or so, and that will last usually about two or three bleach fill ups because it's just really good stuff. It kind of gets on the walls of the plastic tank and continues to, to feed soap off of that somehow. So it's not like we have to fill it every time. Uh, or have to add soap every single time that we add bleach. But that's the only time we have to get up in there is we're going to add our soap. But we can actually also um, 
deliver it into the tank if we wanted to by hooking up those uh, bleach fill hoses uh, if we wanted to do it that way. Well, we just found it faster the, the few times that we have to add soap, just get up in there and pour it in there and close the cap back real quick. But these, uh, these uh, exhaust hoses, vent hoses, whatever you want to call them, they are huge. That's a big key to protecting your equipment and uh, preventing stuff from rusting out quick. And I'll show you next how what we run those hoses to. The vent hoses will run down the tank like you saw in the previous uh, picture. And then they just run along the side of the skid. And then I've drilled two holes into my bed. And we stick the holes or stick the hoses through the holes. And then uh, they come out of the bottom of the bed of the truck and look like this. Now, going back to the pressure washer side of things, we have coming off the unloader, of course, we've got our downstream injector. And right underneath that, that's the red arrow. And then that is hooked underneath that where the blue arrow is pointing to, to a check valve. Uh, this just helps our uh, downstream injectors to last much longer and also deliver a little bit longer uh, or a little bit stronger mix. Um, <clears throat> so we have those available uh, downstream check valves is what they're called at the DougRuckerStore.com. Um, then where the green arrow is pointing at, of course, is our width line that goes over to the hose reel. And I will show you that next. And here you see the other end of the whip line that's coming off of the pressure washer goes over to the hose reel. And that's what feeds the uh, hose. We actually, a couple of weeks ago, discovered that the manifold inside this Titan hose reel, it's not even a year old, is leaking. So now we're just bypassing the swivel. So we actually take the hose out of that little fitting there and just hook the pressure hose directly um, to the uh, hook that whip line directly to the pressure hose now. So we're just bypassing the swivel using the reel only for storage purposes only now. So that's what I do usually when I have a problem with the manifold and sometimes even with a swivel. Um, we'll just eliminate using the swivel and the reel to spray through it and just use the, the reel only for storage purpose and bypass it all. Then inside, we also have the shirts box uh, remote system for downstreaming. So makes it very easy on the back of a building, back of a house, whatever. Um, all we have to do is hit the remote button to change from our bleach mix to our rinse water. So we don't have to go back and forth to the truck. Just saves a ton of time. Um, best remote box I've ever had um, or used. And I've used many of them. Even tried building some myself. This thing just outlasts them all. Um, and so we actually have three of them on all three of our rigs. We just can't. And I actually have a spare now um, just in case we ever have a problem. We did have one problem uh, with one of them. Sent it back to shirts. They fixed it and sent it right back. Um, so, uh, yeah, got to have a remote system. So next we here, we have our 16 gallon gas tank, which feeds both pressure washers as well as the King Slinger soft wash system. Um, so we don't ever have a need to carry gas cans. Uh, this is plenty to get us through, you know, definitely a day, but usually every two to three days we end up filling it up. Um, the gas tank, the fuel tank is very close to the bumper. So when we fill up, it's very easy to take the gas uh, dispenser at the gas station um, and stand on the bumper and reach over and put it into the spout, which you can see sticking through the top. And of course, having that spout there makes a great little storage area for an extra 50 foot hose as well as a garden hose. But um, I'm a big proponent of having these larger gas tanks and feeding all of your equipment so that you don't have to carry um, gas cans, mainly from downtime when you run out of gas and having to stop and uh, fill up uh, gas uh, 
in your machines and, and that type of thing. So it just saves a lot of time and a great peace of mind that you're not going to run out of gas or have to check gas on jobs and things of that nature. And then, of course, over on the right, you see the blue arrow. That's our 24 inch little big guy fits perfectly um, in that spot where it's located. Um, over to the right, you see we've got a couple of wands, and I'll talk about that here in a second. So on board, we also carry our uh, adjustable gun that you can see there, dual lance wand. That's for cleaning delicate areas, trimming out driveways, concrete areas, um, things of that nature. That one is on the right, and then the one on the left is the pressure washer gun assembly. That's what we use for downstreaming and has our J-Rod um, with the various nozzles in it that we use. And right over to the right of the uh, surface cleaner is where those are stored. Um, great little place for those. So that's where we put those and just basically lay them right on top of those vent hoses that I showed you earlier. And then in the forklift uh, racks, because these skids can be easily forklift on and off when you need to. This is where we store three different uh, aluminum wands, a 24 inch, a 36 inch, and I believe a 59 inch. Um, and I've got those tied off basically with a piece of string so they don't slide all the way down um, the uh, skid channel there when we're traveling. So um, that's where we, we store those so that they're not rolling around or, or getting underneath the skid or anything like that. So it's a great little place to store those. Hey, sorry this video has been so long, but I really wanted to kind of get detailed and show you um, how we, how I have this set up in case y'all get ideas uh, for wanting us to build something or mainly if you're going to build your own or whatever. Um, but here's a shot of a little step stool that we also carry. We use it mainly for detailing around entry doors, um, cleaning the windows at entry doors, things of that nature. Um, just where we don't need a ladder, but just need a little step stool to get a dirt dauber or something like that. Um, back behind the fuel tank there, you see the battery that, uh, there's two batteries back there. One operates the five gallon per minute machine or supplies power to the five gallon per minute machine. That big battery there you see supplies power to the hose reels as well as the eight gallon per minute machine. Um, hey, don't forget, leave me a like, leave me a uh, subscribe to uh, the channel and hit that bell so that you get notifications whenever I come out. But most importantly, hey, ask me questions if you have any comments. I'd love to get those and I always try to answer every question I possibly can. Um, again, sorry this video has been so long, but I'm going to wrap it up here in just a second. Got a couple more things to show you. Okay, one of the last things I wanted to show you is just to the left of the uh, surface cleaner, we have room for uh, three five gallon buckets with our pump up sprayers. We always carry one pump up sprayer that's got wrap mixed in it, um, usually about 15 to 1, 20 to 1, something like that. Um, then we've got one that is just has water and we add our rust remover to it when we need to uh, remove rust stains. And the other one is a pump sprayer that just has a little bit of uh, bleach mix in it, 50-50 bleach mix for when we need to do a little spot duty or something like that. Well, folks, there you have it. Sorry it's been so long, but like I said, I wanted to kind of be detailed with you and kind of show you as much as I possibly could. That's the uh, truck skid that we use. Um, it's, been a, it's an awesome way. I just hate hauling trailers. And uh, so this is what we use pretty much on 80, 70, 80% of my jobs. I do have a trailer rig that I use occasionally um, just when I want to go out and do something and the guys are busy. But uh, it's been a great little rig. In fact, I just drove it down to Florida to do some hospital cleaning and uh, from Houston all the way to Florida and back and man it just ran like a champ and hauled the load uh, hauled the load just fine um, no issues whatsoever so uh, if you're considering getting a rig and you want something like this built let me know um, we can build one for you or if you're doing it yourself leave me some questions if you have some questions about these types of truck skids be glad to answer those for you 
And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, leave me a comment. Leave me a question. Uh, hit that bell so you get notifications. And by all means, give me a like. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day or night or whenever you're watching this. And hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I've got a video coming out next week on commercial pressure washing, some tips and tricks um, on a building that we did yesterday. So look forward to that. You guys take care.